Today's lesson involves uh, graphing quadratic equations in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. This is the general form of the quadratic equation. This first term here is called the quadratic term. This is a linear term, and this is the constant. We're going to start off by graphing the most basic quadratic equation, y equals x squared. Why is it the most basic? Because it has no linear term, no constant term. We'll see later what effect these have on the graph. And it has no coefficient in front of the x squared term. So this is basically the simplest graph you can make. We'll start by making a nice big graph. This is not a linear equation. This is actually going to curve, so we want to have a large area to look at. So where do we start? Well, we'll make an xy chart. Okay, so when we start our xy chart, we need to consider what values of x we should use. I could use any values from negative 10 to positive 10 that would fit on this graph as far as x is concerned. The problem is if I, if I use really big values like x equals 10, I'm going to have to square that, and that's going to give me y as 100. And there's no way I can plot 10, 100 on this graph. So I'm going to try to pick x values that are really close to the origin here, like let's say negative 3 to positive 3 I think would be good to use. I could go further, but I don't want to get crazy with uh, the number of x values, and I don't think you do either. So let's stick with these. We'll start by plugging in negative 3 for x into the function. y is going to equal negative 3 squared. Now this is how you write negative 3 squared. You must use parentheses even though there were no parentheses in the original equation. That's because this is the only way to square a negative number with parentheses. So negative 3 times negative 3 will give us positive 9. Now I'll plot this on the graph. Negative 3, 9 is right there. Now we'll square a negative 2 and that'll give us a positive 4. Negative 2, 4 is right here on the graph. Negative 1 squared gives us 1. We square 0, we get 0. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared 4, 3 squared 9. So this is what our function looks like. It's, it's not really a U, and it's not a V shape. It's sort of a cross between a U and a V. We call it a parabola. This is a parabolic curve. Uh, now this parabolic curve, parabolas actually appear in the real world quite often. Anytime you throw a projectile in the air, like a basketball or hit a golf ball, it's going to follow a parabolic curve. Now, th usually those parabolas open down. This particular one opens up. You might see a curve like this. It's opening up between two telephone poles, how the line sort of sags, or a clothesline, how the line will sag between two points. Some of the critical features that you need to be aware of, one of the most critical points right here is the vertex. This vertex is 0, 0. The vertex is important because in this parabola, it's where the function stops moving down and turns around and starts moving up again. This parabola also has an axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is important because it divides the parabola in half. The equation for this axis of symmetry is x equals 0, and it's really important to write that equation x equals 0. If someone asks you the axis of symmetry, don't just say 0. It's, it's a vertical line, and the equation of that line is x equals 0. Notice the difference between the axis of symmetry and the vertex. The vertex is a point. It's a coordinate point. If you fail to put parentheses around it, you could get marker on a, on a test. Same with the axis of symmetry. If you just say 0 and not x equals 0, you could get marked wrong on a test. So be careful with that. One's a point and one's a line. This parabola opens up. We talked about that. Some parabolas open down. This one opens up. This parabola has a minimum value because it opens up. The minimum value on this parabola is y equals 0. X will never have a minimum value on a parabolic function because the curve always moves to the left. And I know you think, wow, this, this parabola is getting steeper and steeper. At some point, won't it go vertical? No, it'll never become vertical. It'll approach vertical, but it'll never become vertical. It'll always keep moving to the left. Same on the other side. Uh, it gets steeper and steeper as it goes up, but it'll never stop moving to the right. And because of that, x has no minimum value, no maximum value. I mean, you could go out here to x is a billion, and you could square a billion, and you'd get a huge value for y, which would be way up there, but there would be a point up there to match your x value. So there is no minimum x, and there is no maximum x value. There is, however, a minimum y value. This function comes down, hits y equals 0, and then turns around go and goes back up. There is no value of x that you could plug into this function and get like y equals negative 1 or y equals negative 2. There's just no way to get a y value less than 0. So we say that y has a minimum value of 0. Another thing you should be aware of is the domain. We just talked about x 
that keeps moving to the left and it also keeps moving to the right therefore this function has no minimum or maximum x therefore the x the domain is all reals the y however the range values can only be y greater than or equal to zero because of the minimum value of y the minimum value is zero therefore the range is y is greater than or equal to zero notice the difference between the minimum value and the range they're related but they're asking different questions the minimum value is asking what is the smallest thing y could be the smallest thing y could be a zero the range is asking a more general question what could y be and y could be anything as long as it's greater than or equal to zero all right now you try this one I'm giving you some guided practice so you may want to pause the video here to graph this one on your own okay you've had time to graph this one on your own um, hopefully you got these values negative 3 squared is 9 9 minus 5 is 4 you can plot that on your graph square negative 2 and subtract 5 you're looking at negative 1 uh, these are your other values you can tell right here we've hit the vertex and now we're going back up again the vertex is 0 negative 5 the axis of symmetry is again x equals 0 it's not always going to be x equals 0 just on these uh, first two it's been that this parabola opens up and the minimum value is y equals negative 5 what's the domain here again it's all real numbers there is no minimum x or maximum x the range value y is greater than negative 5 that's right it's got to it opens up it's going to come down here to this negative 5 and it's going to turn around and go back up again. Now compare this function with the last one we graphed. It's the same size, same shape basically. All that's happened is it's moved down 5 units. The vertex before was here at 0, 0. Now it's at 0, negative 5. So all the points have moved down 5 units. What do you think caused that? That's right, this negative 5 up here in the function, y equals x squared minus 5. It's the same as y equals x squared, but because we subtracted 5 from all those values, it shifted it down 5 units. That's what the constant does. The constant moves the function up if it's positive, down if it's negative. Now, take a moment here to go ahead and work out problems number 1 and 2. You may want to pause the video here, give yourself some time to work it out. All right, this is where so many mistakes are made. Uh, let's see if you squared a negative 3 correctly. You should have used parentheses. We've been talking about that in the xy charts. It's imperative that you use parentheses when you square a negative 3. That gives you a positive 9 then because you end up with a negative 3 times a negative 3. If you write it without parentheses, then that means the opposite of 3 squared or the opposite of 3 times 3, which is going to give you a negative 9. Now, try number 2. And if you did it, you should see that it's actually going to be equal to a negative 9. Why? Well, how many negatives do you see there? You may see two negatives, but there are actually three. This negative that's getting squared, there's two negatives there because it's negative 3 times negative 3, and then you have a third one out here. Three negatives is going to produce a negative, so it's going to be negative 9. Again, the negative 3 times itself is 9, and then this is the opposite of that, so it's negative 9. Try, try number 3 and 4 now. All right, when you substitute in the negative 3, you should end up with negative 2 times 9 plus a positive 15. That's going to be negative 18 plus 15. That's negative 3. And number 4, you're going to get negative negative 3 squared, so that's going to be negative 9 minus 21 minus 2. That's going to be negative 32. Good job if you got those right. Th this is very critical because this is where most of the mistakes are made in graphing quadratics. They're made in the xy chart with uh, the negative quadratic terms. So many mistakes I, I don't even care to mention. But, uh, if you can get that part down and very carefully show your work then you won't make uh, those silly mistakes. Alright, let's try graphing one of these now. This graph is going to look a little different. It's got a negative quadratic term. This is one of the graphs that is missed most frequently on tests by students, so be careful here. I'll give you a minute to try it. Pause the video. All right, here's our xy chart. Uh, I like those same x values, negative 3 to positive 3. In fact, I usually start with these when I'm graphing quadratics because they're simple, they're small, they're easy to plug in. If we square a negative 3, that's going to be 9, but there's a negative in front of it, so it's negative 9 plus 4, which is negative 5. The next point is going to be negative 4 plus 4, which is going to be 0. Negative 2 zeros right here. 
we square a negative 1, we get 1. This is the opposite of that, though, so it's negative 1 plus 4. That's a positive 3. Plug in 0, we get 4. Plug in 1, we get 3 again. And we're starting to see symmetry in the y values. You can see the y values, how right here, this has got to be the vertex because the points were going up, and now they're going down again. And the next point should end up being negative 5. And indeed, we get negative 9 plus 4, which is negative 5. So you can often see that symmetry in the, uh, in the y values, if your x values are in order. Hopefully you're making x, y charts with the x values in order. And there's our parabola. So what's different about this one? It opens down. Okay. Uh, what caused that? The negative here in front of the quadratic term caused it to open down. It's also the vertex has been shifted up four units. And we sort of could have predicted that because we know what the constant does. When it's positive, it shifts the vertex up. When it's negative, it shifts the vertex down. So our vertex is at 0, 4. These are the critical features of the quadratic that are, that are important. Our axis of symmetry, again, is x equals 0. Again, it won't always be that way, but this time it is. This parabola opens down. Therefore, it has a maximum value, a maximum value for y. Remember, x has no max or min, but y does. What is the max value of y? It's the y-coordinate of the vertex, this, this value right here. y it will never be greater than 4 in this function. So that's the maximum value for y. The parabola comes up. It reaches a value of 4 for y, and then it comes back down. Here y is 3, here y is 0, here y is, looks like negative 5, I guess. And it keeps going down. What's the domain here? For all our parabolic functions in Algebra 1, the domain is always going to be all reals. Now, that'll change when you hit Algebra 2, because in Algebra 2, the parabolas will open sideways. Algebra 1, we study functions, and all of our parabolic functions will either open up or down. If they open sideways, they're not functions, and we don't worry about those in Algebra 1. All right, what would the range be? That's right, it's related to the max value, which is 4. So, because this function opens down, though, y can have a value that's less than 4 not greater than 4, less than or equal to 4 because the, the function opens down. This parabola opens down so the range is less than or equal to 4. Last time we did the range it was greater than because it opened up. Now it's less than or equal to 4. Now what do you think this one will look like? Just looking at the the equation, what, what can you predict? Well that's right, it's going to open up because it's got a positive x squared term. That we can tell. We've never seen a linear term yet. So I wonder what this is going to do to the function. We'll look at that. Also there's a coefficient in front of the x squared term that we haven't seen before. So we've got a couple of new things here we're going to check out. Make your xy chart and see what happens. Alright, I'm using the same values as before. Now this is considerably more work to figure out these uh, y values because you've got to take the negative 3 and plug it in. You've got to square it and then multiply it by 2. And then negative 4 times negative 3, that takes some work too. So you might want to get either a piece of scratch paper or, or something, or just find some room on your paper off to the side to work these out. Uh, this will be 4 times 2 is 8, and then negative 4 times negative 2 is 8, so you're going to get 16 for y. When you substitute negative 1, you should end up getting 2 plus 4, which is 6. Substitute 0, of course you're going to get 0. Now notice... I didn't graph any of these other points. Why not? Because negative 330 is off my graph. It's way, way up there. Negative 216 is also way, way up there. Don't feel bad if you find points in your xy chart that don't fit on your graph. Remember, there are millions and millions of points that we're not graphing. So don't feel bad if you find a, a few of them in your xy chart that you couldn't graph. Let's see. I plug in 1. That's going to give me 2 minus 4 is a negative 2. I plug in 2. And I get 8 minus 8, which is 0. Okay, I'm starting to see symmetry now in the y values. The next point will probably be 6. And there it is, 6. And that's probably good enough. The next point would be 16. I'm not going to bother going any further. So here's our parabola. What's different about it? It opens up. It's much thinner than before. It's not as wide as the other one was. What do you think caused that? The 2, the coefficient of the x squared term, caused it to be thinner than usual. Also, you notice that our, our vertex is over here at 1, negative 2. The axis of symmetry is not x equals 0 anymore. It's, uh, what is it? 
It's x equals 1. What caused that is the linear term. Anytime there's a linear term, that's going to shift your parabola right or left. The next thing we want to look at is we see that it opens up, and that's because of the positive quadratic term here. It also has a minimum value because it opens up. What is the minimum value? The y-coordinate of the vertex, y equals negative 2. That is the smallest value for, for y that occurs in this function, y equals negative 2. What's the domain here? Just like all our other functions, it's all real numbers. What's the, what's the range? Well, the minimum value is y equals negative 2, so that means that y could be bigger or equal to negative 2. It's greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, what do you predict for this function? Yes, it's going to open down because of the negative quadratic term. Do you think it's going to be wider than usual or thinner than usual? If it was just y equals negative x squared, it would be normal thickness. But this, this one is a fractional value. Now, the last time we saw it, uh, it was real thin. That's because the coefficient of the quadratic term was 2. This is 1 fourth. So it's, it's smaller than 1. So it'll probably do the opposite of what the 2 did, which was to make it thinner. It's probably going to make it wider, but we'll see. It also has a linear term. And so that's going to shift our uh, axis of symmetry right or left. So let's make our xy chart and give this a shot. Probably going to want to use a calculator for this one. And just estimate on your graph if you get a fraction or a decimal where that would be. Negative 5 and a fourth is just down a little bit. Negative 1.25 is a little below where negative 1 would be. Okay, have we hit the vertex yet? It's kind of hard to tell. The vertex might be this point, but then again, it, it might be a little higher. So don't ever try to predict what the, where the vertex is. The vertex may be over here. Who knows? Uh, I never try to predict where it is. I just wait till I start going down, and then I'll know exactly where the vertex is. But don't assume you know where it is. See, it went a little higher. Now, is that the vertex, or could it go a little higher? Let's see. Uh, we, we Okay, so it went back down again. I'm pretty confident 2, 1 is the vertex. And now I can actually use symmetry to, uh, to, to use the point since I know that I have symmetry going on here with all my parabolas. I can predict this next point over here using uh, symmetry and my axis of symmetry here. Let's see, this is 1, 2, 3 points over a little bit down, so I should put a point right there. Uh, here we have 4 across uh, right there. I'm measuring 4 from the axis of symmetry. There's 1, 2, 3, 4 units, so I should be 1, 2, 3, 4 units over here. This is going to be 5 units over and a little down, so I count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units and a little bit down and put another point right there. So there we go. Nice looking parabola. It opens down. We knew it would. It's a little fatter than usual because of the 1 fourth. Whenever your a value, your the, the the coefficient of the quadratic term is uh, less than 1 or greater than negative 1. In other words, between negative 1 and 1, your parabola will be a little wider than usual, and that's what's going on here. Uh, our vertex is at 2, 1. It opens down, and it has a max value this time of y equals 1. What's the domain? All reals. What's the range? y is less than or equal to 1. Great job. That's it for today.